The release of the Brawler kit was one of the most confusing in the game. Because of him completely breaking parts of the game with a multitude of bugs, we never actually got to see a fully realized kit. As when he eventually did get his bugs patched, he was also met with several nerfs. This has left him in a state where he is almost unanimously agreed to be a bottom 10 brawler in almost every sense. With him only really finding a niche in knockout or when paired with some tanks. Kid also is not helped by the fact that they decided to give a support brawler abilities more suited to an assassin. I understand trying to make a teammate reliant brawler still usable in solo situations, but having both a gadget and a star power purely dedicated to an assassin playstyle just does not fit with a supposed support brawler. I won't pretend to understand that much about Showdown, as I rarely play the mode. But from what I understand from speaking with people who do play the mode, this star power also makes Kit truly unfair in it. And when looking at Kit, this just doesn't fit. I mean, Kit is a legendary brawler, and when looking at almost all of them, we see a common theme. They are easy to use, highly versatile brawlers that also have high skill ceilings. They are often the brawlers that a lot of people tend to main due to this. Even though some have had times where they weren't so good in the meta, they could always be relied on to be a consistent or fun pick for players to invest in. The only legendary that strays from this in my opinion is Kit. Despite being one of my personal favorite brawlers, I have to admit he overall just has a clunky kit, with almost no versatility or independent skill expression, as most of the time now it's either wait for super and try to hit thrower shots while you are healing a tank, or use gadget to get a few sneaky takedowns on low HP brawlers. So my goal with this rework will be to play more into kit as a support brawler, and make him something more than just the tank buffer or showdown menace. So to start, Let's look at Kit's base mechanics and see what works and what doesn't. Firstly, we see that Kit has relatively low HP and damage. His low damage is also coupled with one of the shortest ranges in the game, only having an attack range of three and two thirds of a tile. To make up for this, his attacks have a very fast unload and reload speed, and each also charges his super by 20%. This added in with his very fast movement speed means that in closer range combat kit will be able to get in and build up super with one good engagement. With him only having to watch out for the mid-ranged and high damage brawlers. And then in farther range combat kit's trait allows him to auto charge his super in 20 seconds. But speaking about his super, it is very unique in that it has two different modes. If the player decides to attach to an opponent, this super will deal a flat 1600 damage to the opponent. They along with Kit will both then be unable to move for two seconds, in which they take an additional 250 damage twice. During this time, both Kit and the enemy are both still able to take damage. So using Kit's super in this way is very risky. As if his teammates aren't there to attack too, Kit can often be taken down for using his super. On the other hand, if Kit uses his super on one of his teammates, he matches onto them for 10 seconds. For these 10 seconds, both Kit and his teammate heal for 600 HP per second, and Kit will be unable to take damage. Kit also gains a different main attack when attached to teammates. This attack is a thrower ability that can travel up to about seven and one third tiles. This also does double his regular attack damage with a total of 3.2K damage per shot. So although it is a bit harder to hit it can two or three shot a majority of the brawlers in the game. Next onto his gadgets kit has one built towards a more aggressive style of play and one towards a more supportive. His aggressive gadget might be one of the best in the game if it wasn't attached to a supportive brawler like Kit. The cardboard box gadget allows Kit to be invisible for five seconds during which he can double the passive charge of his super by standing still. This gadget is literally just a better Leon Super, as although it lasts one second shorter, it can be used at any time. It also gives the player more versatility, by giving them the option to charge up their Super faster on more passive modes. Again, if this ability was given to any assassin-like brawler, it would probably break the game. But onto his hamburger gadget, it is much more tame being a relatively good heal, but being much more situational. 
This gadget also is not helped by the fact that while playing Kit, you often have to guess on when to use it. As it is fairly common for the player's name to cover your teammate's health while attached to them. But more on that in the rework section. Moving on to the final parts of his kit, we get to the part where most people have a problem with Kit. His star powers. First Kit's power-hungry star power is one of the most situational ones in the game, only being useful in two modes in which he as a support brawler should not be one of the best in. And then his overly attached star power, although providing some value, is overall pretty underwhelming, as it adds no new effects to his kit and rather just extends his super. Overall, when looking at his gadgets and star powers, we see that his gadgets either don't fit his supportive style or are too clunky to use, and his star powers are underwhelming or provide no value in the modes he is supposed to be good in. To be a brawler marketed around being a support, his extra abilities do little to nothing to enhance these abilities in a meaningful way. So now let's hop into what I would do to improve this. To start off the rework, I'll begin with some quality of life changes I would like to see implemented. Firstly, I would like to give Kit negative priority when attached to brawlers. Again, as mentioned before, Kit can not take damage when latched onto teammates. But due to him overlapping them, your player tag often covers up your teammate's health. I see no need to put so much emphasis on your health when you cannot take damage. So flipping these would help with clarity on when to use his hamburger gadget. And when your teammate is about to be taken down so Kit can be ready to act. This would also help Kit in modes like Brawl Ball, where if he latched into the opponent, he could be past the ball and put in a bad situation when his super was over. Now his opponent would have to waste an ammo getting rid of the ball, while Kit could get an easier takedown although this might hurt him on defense of the goal a bit. The next change I would like to see made is how Kit determines who he latches onto. It is often the case that when your teammate is under attack, a Kit will try to latch on and stun the enemy. But because of how the super works, he will accidentally latch onto his teammate, resulting in both of them going down, and vice versa. I would like for his super to not prioritize enemies or teammates, but rather to go by the brawler closest to the center of the attack. And finally, the last quality change I would like to see is with Kit taking down a brawler with his super. Right now, even though Kit would still be allowed to move, he is unable to attack for two seconds if he takes down a brawler with his super. This is because Kit is stuck in the mode that he would be in if the opponent did not die. So I would like for the game to act as if his super missed if he gets a takedown with it. That way he will immediately go back into his regular mode and be able to attack still. But now that we are done with the quality changes, let's move on to my base kit changes. Firstly, I will be getting rid of both of Kit's star powers. Again, Power Hungry is too mode dependent similar to other star powers in the past that had to be reworked. Like 8-Bit's Extra Life and B's Honeycomb. And then Overly Attached, just does not provide enough value for a star power. But in its stead, I have changed Kit's super a bit. To start off, I buffed the initial damage of his super by 25%, from 1600 to 2000. This also buffs the total amount of damage from 2100 to 2500. This is an important change as it changes the following interactions with Kit. Next, I also extended Kit's super from 10 seconds to 12. Kit will also now be refunded a portion of his super if he detached early depending on when he does it. From 10 seconds on he is refunded, no super. As for the rest of Kit's base kit, I feel it fits in pretty well for AA Brawler meant to be on the more supportive side. So now let's move on to his gadgets and new star powers. For these, I was a bit conflicted. Again, Kit was released with half of his kit being based around being an assassin despite being a support. But if we base his whole new kit around just being a support brawler, players who like the assassin side of kit will feel like they lost a fun brawler. So in the end, I decided it was too late to completely get rid of the assassin side of kit. So instead, I decided to make them abilities that could be used both aggressively and supportively. First, for his hamburger gadget, the only change it will be getting is its ability to now be used outside of kit's super. So Kit would now be able to get an instant 2.4k heal 
if he finds himself in trouble. But it would still be more beneficial for him to use it when attached to a teammate as it would get way more value. Also, with the other quality of life change, it would be easier to use effectively. Now for his cardboard box, gadget, which I will be making several nerfs and changes to. To fully understand why I made my changes, let's look at the other invisibility features in the game and see how they compare to each other. When comparing Leon's gadget to Sandy's super, we see that they are complete trade-offs of each other. Leon's gadget lasts over twice the length of Sandy's super, but can be destroyed early. On the other hand, Sandy's super is way bigger in size and can be manually placed, with its drawback being it has to be charged up unlike Leon's gadget. So when comparing Kit's gadget to Leon's super, I want to make them similar in their drawbacks and strengths. So since Leon's super lasts 6 seconds, I will be nerfing Kit's gadget to just under half that in 2.5 seconds. But in exchange for this Kit, would now be able to use it when attached to a teammate to make them invisible too. Keep in mind though, just like Leon's super any attack made by Kit or his teammate would break the invisibility. Also, the supercharge buff would now always be active and would charge the same as it does now. Currently, if you stand still over the 5 seconds, his gadget would charge an extra 25% of his super. So now it would be the same with it charging 5% of his super every half second. I feel this change will still allow Kit to be that assassin-like brawler with his gadget, but he can also transfer that to his teammates for a bit. But just like his hamburger gadget, which gets more value the higher HP your teammate has, this gadget, when paired with a teammate, will only get value if they can get into a good position within those 2.5 seconds, without the help of their gadget, main attack, hypercharge, or super. But now on to his new star powers. Just like with the gadgets, I will be making one more aggressive oriented and the other more supportive, but both will be able to provide value to your team in a supportive manner. His first new star power is Blacklist. When using his super on an opponent kit, gains a 40% shield and causes the attached brawler to take 20% more damage from all sources for the two seconds. This star power is designed to help Kit survive, as when he supers in, he would now have the equivalent of 10k HP, or 11.5k HP with the shield gear. This star power also gets value even if your teammates don't take advantage of the 20% damage buff as Kit's super is included. This means Kit's super damage with this star power is further buffed to 3000 because it would deal an initial hit of 2400 and then two ticks of 300. On to his next star power, we have the co-host star power. Deciding to share the spotlight with his teammate, Kit gives that brawler his passive supercharge, but it is only at 80% effectiveness. This means that if Kit stays attached to a brawler for the full 12 seconds, they would charge their super by 48%. If you pair this with the reworked cardboard box gadget and they stay invisible for the full two and a half seconds, the attached brawler would then charge their super by a total of 68%. Free supercharge is a concept that we have seen before with Bose Totem before it was reworked. But the problem with it before was that you could get it instantly. In Kit's case, he has to charge up his super first, and even then, he would also have to use a gadget to charge their super more than 50%. This star power may sound a bit on the weaker side then, but keep in mind that Kit would now be refunded a portion of his super if he detached early. This means Kit could help his teammates who are close to a super get it and then detach and do the same for their other teammate. This star power is about giving your teammates a more universal buff rather than just healing. But now we have once again reached the final part of this video, where I will discuss my concepts for a Kit Mythic Gear and Hypercharge, along with what I believe will be Kit's best builds after this rework. So to start off, we have the Take 2 Mythic Gear. Kit uses his movie star influence to get a second chance at his super if he misses. This Mythic Gear does have a 45 second cooldown, so even in the longest games he would not be able to use its effect 
more than four or five times. But this offers a new way to play kit using U Super as a mobility mechanic. Also, for those who don't want to keep track, the gear will flash when it is ready, similar to how the damage and speed gears flash when they are active. Next up, we have his hypercharged star performance. On the aggressive side, if Kit would be taken down after using his super, he instead plays dead by going invisible for three seconds and regains half of his HP. On the more supportive side, the Brawler Kit is currently attached to gains all of Kit's hypercharge buffs and gain an immunity to adverse effects. This hypercharge can be used while already attached to a brawler but will always only last five seconds. This hypercharge was based off of the concept of Kit either giving another award-winning performance by playing dead or coaching his teammate into giving the best performance of their life. But now let's finally move on to what I believe will be Kit's best builds after this rework. I believe Kit would have three main builds after this rework, with the first one being his Assassin build. This build focuses in on making Kit a better one-on-one -on -one brawler, so he doesn't have to be as reliant on his teammates. By going in with his super and allowing his opponents to be taken down easier, he makes way for some double Assassin combos, with brawlers like Buzz who don't always need the heals, or with brawlers like Fang who would be able to reset his super easier with the 20% extra damage. Also, with his gadget, he can still provide some utility to brawlers who don't exactly need the supercharge from the other star power, like Stu Dynamite and EMZ. They would be able to get in with the invisibility and get great value out of a single gadget. In Stu's case, he would be able to charge up that first super that better players almost never let him get. With Dynamite, they would have a cheese strategy of going in with an invisible Dyna stun, and so the EMZ she would be able to surprise the enemy with a super out of nowhere. Finally, with increased damage from the star power, allers who can act fast on the stun would be amazing, so I expect snipers like Angelo and Piper to also be able to make great use of the assassin kit. But now, we are on to his second build. This is Kit's tank build. These are brawlers who would get very little use out of the invis as they would need their attacks to get in, in particular brawlers like Mortis and Hank. But with the added supercharge from the co-host star power, I expect Kit to be able to make brawlers like Ash, Rosa, El Primo, and Jackie semi-raid bosses. Unless they opponents acted as a team to take them down early, they would pretty much always have super. I also expect Kit's rework to just be an overall buff to tanks as brawlers like Frank and Hank, who always get their attacks interrupted, would be free from that anytime Kit gets his hypercharge. But on to the final build, this what I personally think would be Kit's best build after the rework. And this is Kit's aggro support build. If the tank build made your teammates raid bosses, this one makes your teammates capable of playing the game on easy mode. As just by having Kit on you, you would be able to get 48% of your super in 12 seconds. And if they activate Gadget, not only would that shoot up to 68, you would also be able to surprise opponents and maybe get a sneaky takedown. This would probably be Kit's best overall build to synergize with the entire Brawler cast, but some specific ones I think would be game changers are Surge, as Kit would stop him from being hard stuck at lower upgrades. Tara and Jean as they have game-changing supers. Max, Edgar and Daryl as Kit would be basically doubling their passive supercharge. And the brawler combo I think would be the wildest is Kit with Leon as they would have a crazy uptime on invisibility abilities after Kit charges up his first super. But that is about all I have for this video. Let me know how you guys feel about my Kit rework. I really tried to encapsulate both that assassin and support style to Kit, but he is definitely one of the trickiest brawlers to balance. As if Kit is balanced anytime a brawler is broken, Kit would also jump to being broken. But again, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.